So you've probably heard there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. This famous quote has been recited endlessly by people who distrust statistics and statisticians in general. Much of this distrust has to do with p-hacking. In this video, we will provide examples of different types of p-hacking and share important tips on how to avoid it. First off, a p-hacker is someone who violates rules of statistics by influencing the data collection process or statistical analyses performed in order to produce a statistically significant result. Fortunately, this occurs quite frequently, although you may not even realize it's happening. This topic is important, if not critical, for all researchers. The statistical results can only be interpreted at face value when every choice in the data analysis was performed exactly as planned and documented as part of the experimental design. So, how can p-hacking be avoided? Here are seven important tips. First, hypotheses and sample sizes should be established before data collection, not after. Second, you should avoid testing for significance multiple times on the same data set over time. Tip number three, don't make multiple comparisons on the same data set without taking into account the number of comparisons being made. Also, don't choose a subset of data to analyze after observing the results. Don't eliminate outliers without identifying a special cause. Don't change the alternative hypothesis to match the direction of the results observed in the data. And finally, don't choose a less appropriate analysis because the p-value shows the result you want to see. Let's see how p-hacking can occur in the real world by looking at the drawings from the Mega Millions Lottery from June 2005 to October 2013. Numbers were drawn every Tuesday and Friday during this period for a total of 869 drawings. In each contest, five balls were drawn at random from a bin of 56 balls. During this period, ball number 47 was drawn only 57 times, while number 48 was drawn a whopping 101 times. The probability of drawing a specific number on a given day is 0 0.089. Let's test if balls number 47 and number 48 were drawn at significantly different rates than what would be expected from a random drawing by performing a one proportion test on each ball as shown here. The p-values for these tests are 0 0.00661 and 0 0.00423. This would imply we have strong evidence the drawing was not random. However, three mistakes were made in this analysis. First, we isolated a subset of the data based on the results and treated it as if it were the only data we collected. If we want to test only balls number 47 and 48 for randomness, we need to state that before collecting data. Second, we changed the direction of the alternative after seeing the results. What you are going to test should be established before collecting data, not after. Third, even if these were the only tests we planned, we should have adjusted the p-values for the fact that we looked at multiple tests. This example shows a few ways p-hacking can occur. For more reminders, check out this very helpful Path to P-Hacking Guide created by GraphPad founder Dr. Harvey Matulski. Thank you.